There's been so much happening since the last episode. I've expanded my base massively, taken on a role as a treasurer in the government, and been yelled at for being a dirty, rotten polluter. So let's get going. So first, I needed to evolve my humble beginnings in my small little shop with just a single stockpile to be able to sell more goods and be able to house more goods. One thing you should prepare yourself for if you're going into the masonry and pottery professions is that the materials you need to use, like sand and clay and crushed shale, all take up more space in your stockpiles than other types of goods. And I was able to earn my second star, so I could learn a second skill and get that pottery that I wanted. Now, I'm saying pottery, but really it's more about making bricks than anything else. There's a few other things you can make with that pottery skill, but for the most part, it opens up brick making, which is a very nice tier two material to be able to build with. What in the world is a tier two all about in this game, you ask? Many of the crafting tables that people need to use as they progress farther into the game need to be housed in a building that's built out of certain tier or level of material. Bricks isn't the only tier two material. There's also lumber and glass, and each of these is a separate skill to learn in the game. I'm going to have a special video in the future talking about how to help balance economics in this game and probably use these three materials as a reference point because it's important for the world's economy to establish prices that make each of these materials cost about the same for players to purchase while still somewhat equalizing the profit margin for the person making the material. But I digress. With needing more stockpile space, I started to hollow out the hill behind me, which was mainly shale and clay. Both of these materials are useful for me in making bricks. The clay I can use directly, and the shale I can sell to a miner to crush for me into crushed shale. So what winds up happening is I sell my shale to the miner and then buy back from him the crushed shale to use for my bricks. Selling the shale myself helps offset some of the cost of buying it back, so it's a good thing for me to do, to mine out some of this raw shale. And it also gives me a space directly behind my workshop to be able to place these stockpiles. I also decided that I needed to create a couple rooms that were designated as living quarters. To help get skill points faster, you can create rooms and put certain items in the rooms that will cause them to be either a bedroom, or a bathroom, or a kitchen, or perhaps even a general purpose room. Each one of these rooms will independently generate a certain number of skill points depending on what kind of items you have in the room, and again, what tier of material was used to build the room. So I created a general purpose room that also housed a research table that I need to be able to research things filled that with a couple statues, and also created a small bathroom by putting a little latrine in here and wash tub, along with a couple other decorative pieces just to help give a little more skill points for that room. Now, having achieved pottery and being able to make bricks was a major milestone in the world, because up until now, we were all bartering to be able to exchange goods between all the players. The barter system actually works very well in this game in that it stimulates people to have to sell things a player wants in order to buy things the same player is selling, so it creates a fair and balanced trade system in the game early on. But sooner or later, a server usually benefits from having a global currency, a single type of money that can be exchanged between all the players. It's often the case that someone is selling an item you need badly, but just doesn't need anything you're able to sell them. The global currency alleviates that restriction and allows wider trade across all the commodities. In this server, we're trying to exercise more of the government capabilities that the game put in place, and had an election for a treasurer that would create the currency and help manage it across this eco-world. I decided to step forward and take this important role, 
because I had never done it before and wanted to discover my own ways to mess it up. The first step in this process is to create an actual mint where you establish what the currency will be and it gives you the ability to generate that currency. Another player with the actual skill to do so built the mint for me and donated it to the cause. My job was to build one of these tier two rooms to house the mint and start using it. I chose a little out of the way place next to the government building which had already been built and nestled it into this rocky sandstone hill. I liked the way it looked at being accessed from the road through this little rock tunnel. It felt like a secure area to keep the world's mint. Now, there's a lot of ways to be able to create the currency that you want to use in the game. You can base your currency off almost anything you want, like sticks or grass, and can value that thing as low or as high as you want. Some servers will use something simple like sticks and immediately generate a large sum of currency, then somewhat equally distribute that across all the players currently on the server, while also creating a law that distributes a certain amount to any new player joining the server afterwards. That works perfectly fine, but I wanted to try to do something a little different and a little more organic. I wanted the players themselves to participate in the generation of the global currency. So what I did was work with another player who had found a very large deposit of gold ore and with his extreme generosity with what I had planned and a couple simple constraints around its use, he essentially turned over his gold mine to become a public gold mine where anyone could go there, mine the gold ore, and then sell that gold directly to the mint where it would be turned into our global currency and in turn, they were also gonna get paid a certain amount of that currency for mining it and delivering it for sale. To keep there from being some mad gold rush to this mine, we put a law in place that would restrict the amount an individual player could mine on a given day to 100 chunks of gold ore. This allowed each player equal opportunity to be able to go mine their own gold, generate some currency for themselves, and encouraged people to participate at least a little bit each day in the server. It also put the overall wealth of the world in the hands of the players. The more they mined, the more revenue would go to the government, and the more money would go into their pockets. This method also created a slow growth of global wealth rather than an immediate influx of currency that would flood the market and potentially upset the economy. The amount of money in the world would slowly grow as the players and kinds of materials were also slowly growing, hopefully naturally balancing all that out while creating a government treasury fund that could be used for government funded projects. It's been in place a little while now and so far things seem to be working out pretty well. New players joining the server have an immediate way to get some starting money and established players can continue to trickle a little bit of coins into their pocket. At some point, I'll stop the mint from accepting this gold ore and just let the amount of currency in the world circulate on its own, but that's what being the treasure is all about. I'm watching the amount of currency in circulation and making sure its growth will continue until everyone has at least a chance to have enough money to be able to buy anything they need without flooding the market with money and creating a kind of inflation. There was also a little treasury room built in the basement of the Mint and a bank located in the bottom floor of the Capitol building. The bank allows players to be able to create separate accounts to help manage their own money and for the government to create special accounts allocated to government projects. So far, we've created a highway fund that the superintendent of highways can use to help pay people for building connecting roads. With that treasury task accomplished, I turned my attention back to my own property, which is in dire need of some updates. Small little powered carts and even some steam trucks were starting to be produced and used by players in the world. 
and my little ramp down to my store was really only good for carts. You couldn't easily get other types of vehicles in and out of this area. So it was time for a major rework. After looking at the planned public roadways, I decided to completely revamp almost the whole area. I was going to turn my shops to face the other direction and essentially bulldoze through part of the building I had already set up and create a whole new store and workshop area back behind everything. And with my new brick making skill, I could create a workshop that was tier two and be able to house more of the crafting tables I would need for the immediate future. This was a huge undertaking that took several days. I had to excavate a large amount of rock and clay to make a big enough space for the new workshop and the store. I also needed a lot more storage space and wanted to take advantage of these large lumber stockpiles that became available in 9.0. These things hold a tremendous amount of product. Not only do they have more slots in the stockpile to put things, but each slot can hold almost twice as much of most products as what can be put in the typical average size stockpile. The only drawback to them is that they take up a huge amount of space. You need a lot of real estate to be able to put one of these things down. They are 12 by 12 blocks on their footprint in the ground and go 11 blocks high. And I was gonna want at least a couple of these things. So after a lot of planning, much excavation and a fair bit of building, I rerouted the access to my store, created a bigger room than I had before of a higher tier, and created a couple areas for these giant stockpiles. So now, with this bigger facility, I was able to pump out massive volumes of bricks and even start making some cement with a new cement kiln, which immediately caused a conflict with my neighbor over my excessive pollution on her farm right next door. It was all good fun, but now I have a potential civil unrest issue to deal with and need to do my best from having an angry neighbor. Maybe I'll bake them a cake, but it'll have to be a brick cake because I don't have the baking skill. Ah, what'll I do? I'm having too much fun. Like and subscribe to not miss the next episode. We're just getting things going.